Hey guys, what's going on? James here, and in this video today, we're going to be previewing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Week 13 matchup versus the Atlanta Falcons. If you guys are new here, go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button if you do enjoy these types of videos, and leave your thoughts and your score predictions for this Buccaneers Week 13 matchup down in the comments section below. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts, opinions, and your score predictions as well it's always a uh, fun thing to read for me so i have a lot of thoughts about this game right my first thought was is this isn't the first time these two teams have played each other this season for you know obviously everybody remembers the tampa bay buccaneers played the atlanta falcons earlier on this year i believe it was week two and the bucks won in pretty convincing fashion the final score of that game was 48 to 25 and while the Falcons did make it a relatively close game in the third quarter of that Week 2 matchup, I believe it was a three-point game, um, either coming away or going into the third quarter, the Buccaneers turned on the Jets, turned up the scoring, and it was essentially a blowout um, from the uh, end of that third quarter or in that third quarter onward. Again, final score 48-25. to So this isn't the first time... These two teams have played each other this year. The last time these two teams played each other, the Bucks won in pretty convincing fashion. Now, whenever you look at both teams' rosters, right, going into this game, things haven't changed too, too much. Of course not. You're, you're not expecting an entire team overhaul for either team um, in the middle of a season, right? That would be ridiculous. But both teams... Still are missing some players in the case of the Bucks. They are missing guys like Antonio Brown, Mike Edwards, since they are serving suspension. And they're still dealing with a couple of nagging injuries um, going on in certain position groups as well. While the Atlanta Falcons, they are sorely missing their star wide receiver, Calvin Ridley, who has taken some time away from football, which I fully support, you know, his decision to do that. I always think you need to take care of yourself in life, um, but the Atlanta Falcons are missing Calvin Ridley. They are also dealing with some nagging injuries in certain position groups on their team as well. So while things haven't changed too, too much in regards to their overall rosters, both teams are still missing a couple of their, you know, really, really good players. Another thing that I thought in my mind was, man, Kyle Pitts has grown more as a player in the past three months since the team has last played, and it'll definitely be something to uh, be worth monitoring. Kyle Pitts, you know, overall, I don't think that he has had the insane statistical year that everybody thought that he was going to have, right? You know, he's not putting up a thousand receiving yards this year, but overall, he's been decent enough 45 receptions 661 receiving yards unfortunately you know unfortunately for the falcons i guess i should say um only one receiving touchdown for them but you can tell that the targets are there the receptions are there the yards are there uh the scoring is just not there so it's still going to be a very tall task for guys like levante david especially um and devin white who is still dealing with some nagging hip and back injuries to contain a guy like Kyle Pitts, contain another tight end like Hayden Hurst for the Atlanta Falcons, who I feel is a very underrated tight end in that Falcons offense, who can do some really, really good things when he gets the opportunities to. He's a former first-round draft pick in his own right. So the, the Falcons have a good tight end room. It'll be up to guys like Levante David, like Devin White, to be able to uh, slow the efficiency, slow the... Uh, you know, chain moving ability of both of those tight ends. Another player that both Levante David and Devin White are going to have to try and contain is going to be the Atlanta Falcons, just all around offensive do it all guy, Cordero Patterson, who is really, really good at football this year. I mean, this this guy has been absolutely insane. The, the types of things that he has been able to do this year. It, it's been absolutely ridiculous, in my opinion. This guy can play running back. This guy can play wide receiver. Uh, you know, I'm a, like, what what more can be said about this guy? He, he's been so good this year um, in so many different types 
of ways. As a runner, he has 411 rushing yards on 93 attempts with four rushing touchdowns. As a receiver, the guy has 41 receptions, 500 yards, and five receiving touchdowns. So he's like the ultimate Swiss Army knife type of player. When you also factor in his returning ability, which is, again, he's one of the best returners in the modern day NFL. So it's just, it's absolutely insane at this point, guys. Um, you know, just how much of a weapon that Cordero Patterson is this late into his career. And if the Buccaneers are able to stop Cordero Patterson, uh, I think that it will definitely hamper a lot of what the Falcons can do on offense. Again, that responsibility is going to be up to guys like Devin White and like Levante David to try and contain him. Also, guys like Andrew Adams and, um, you know, Antoine Winfield Jr. as well. It's a big responsibility. We'll see if the Buccaneers defense is going to be up to that challenge. Um, finally, guys, one more thought I had was, you know, man, division rivalry games can always be so difficult, right? They can be so stinking difficult every single year. It doesn't matter if the Bucks are playing, you know, the Falcons, the Panthers, the Saints. You know, these games always end up being really, really close games. And I feel like this game might be no different. You know, I know last time these two teams played, it was close all the way to the third quarter, and the Buccaneers turned on the Jets. You know, that could happen again, but I also wouldn't be surprised if this was a really, really close game, just because for some reason, you know, that's how divisional matchups go, not just for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but for, I feel like, a lot of teams in the league. And, you know, you always want to beat a division rival. You always want to, you know, be at the top of their division. If the Buccaneers do win this game and go to 9-3, and three, heck, they'll be solidifying, you know, solidifying their spot um, as the champions of the NFC South, even more so um, than than what was already originally thought. So, you know, the Falcons are definitely going to be giving the Bucks their best shot here, especially since they don't want to get swept in the regular season as well. So I think it's going to be a really tough game, a lot more intense than I think people could give it credit for. I saw people say, you know, this is a trap game. Um, again, I don't really believe in that concept. I don't think players or teams believe in trap, con trap game conce concepts. Um, but I do believe that there is a belief that this will be a pretty intense game. However, um, while I do say it's going to be an intense game, I still do have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers winning with a final score of 31 to 21, um, having a double digit lead when everything is said and done a double digit win, if you will. Now that could come in the fourth quarter, you know, towards the end of the game, much like what it was in the case um, last time these two teams played, I'm not sure how it's going to happen. We'll wait and see, but I, I do give the Tampa Bay Buccaneers a double digit win here. When you just look at both teams, um, the Falcons offense, they're hurt. You know, they've got some really intriguing weapons in Kyle Pitts and Cordero Patterson. Yes, they've got some intriguing pieces on defense, but much like what I said earlier on this year, the Falcons to me are still a team that's kind of floating around in limbo. You know, they, they don't know if they want to rebuild or reload. Um, and, and while they are competing for a wild card playoff spot, um, you just kind of get the vibe that there's definitely a cap on how far, uh, you know, an Atlanta Falcons team that's built the way it is right now can go. They're, they're missing a few pieces um, and, and it's apparent. So uh, we'll see. I think you do got to give the Tampa Bay Buccaneers the edge here. But uh, at the end of the day, I do think this will be a pretty intense game. So what do you guys think? That's kind of my thoughts here on the Atlanta Falcons game going into or the Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus Atlanta Falcons game going into week number 13. I do think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will win this game, move on to a 9-3 record, but I do think it will be a pretty intense game. Let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. I would love to hear them. And again, give your guys score predictions as well. I would love to hear that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.